Hey everyone, my name is Ian, I work at the Fort Worth Public Library, and welcome back to another Maker 101 project. Today we're going to be making watercolor microbots, which are a fun way to create watercolor art using robots that you get to tinker with and create. Don't forget you can pick up your kit at your local Fort Worth Public Library branch while supplies last. Alright, let's go ahead and get started and put our watercolor microbot together. Here's everything that comes in your kit. You'll have a piece of watercolor paper. You'll have some watercolors. You'll have some modeling material. You'll have a bottle cap, two cotton swabs, a vibrating motor, a button battery, two metal brads, and a magnet. You will also need some water to activate the watercolors when we get to that part of the project. The first step we're going to do is we're going to take our modeling material and we're going to fill it inside of the bottle cap. All right, it should look something like this whenever you're done. You probably won't use all of your modeling material, but just enough to get the inside covered and enough that you can stick some things into it so that way it will stay stabilized. Next, we're going to take our cotton swabs and we're going to go ahead and break them in half. So just find roughly the halfway point and go ahead and break them just like that. And you're going to do that to both of them. So right about there should be about half. I'm going to go ahead and crack that just like that. And now we're going to take our, um, our pieces that don't have the cotton swab, the other end, and we're going to put them into, we're going to push them into the modeling material and have them sticking out so that it's kind of like a stool or a chair. These are basically going to be the legs that support our little creation today. And if they're too loose, you can always pinch around the modeling material to get them uh, more stabilized. I've even turned it over so that way I can see how far out the cotton swabs are stationed or positioned from my bottle cap to make sure that I'm going to get a good sturdy base. So kind of play around with that and see how much of a sturdy base you get. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to try and get everything attached and set in just like that. All right, I've set the bottle cap off to the side. I have my vibrating motor and my brad. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the brad enough that I can fit the vibrating motor inside of it, just like this. And it's going to wrap around. You're gonna wrap the tongs around the vibrating motor. And you're also going to take your blue wire and you're going to sandwich it in between the motor and the brad so that it stays in contact with it constantly. So I was having trouble getting my wire to make contact with my brad. As you can see, I've wrapped it around there. I went ahead and used my fingernail and just pulled even more of this blue protective coating off of the wire. So there's a little more wire now exposed. And so I'm gonna wrap that around my brad. It's probably very difficult to see on camera, but as you can see, I've sandwiched my wire in between the brad and the motor and the wires that were sticking out, I've wrapped around to kind of trap them in so that they don't, I can gently tug on it and they're not gonna come loose. They are hopefully going to stay right inside of that brad and make contact at all times. Hopefully cross your fingers just like that. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next step. All right, now that we have gotten our brad and motor all situated, I'm gonna go ahead and take the brad and we're gonna stick the tongs into the center of the modeling material and make sure not to put it in too deep otherwise your the actual vibrating part of the motor may end up hitting up against the modeling material and that would stop your uh, creation from working so you may have to kind of play with it a little bit and find an area that works i may even pinch this center up a little bit so it's like a mountain uh, so that way it gives it a little bit of space to work from 
All right, there we go. I've pushed the motor and the brad into the modeling material, making sure to keep this area where the actual motor is spinning free so that way it doesn't um, end up touching any of the other modeling material. And now we're ready to move on to our next step. Next up, I'm going to take my magnet and my battery. I'm gonna take the magnet and place it onto the brad that's touching the motor. And then I'm gonna take my battery and I'm just going to stick that. I don't think it matters which way it goes, uh, but you may end up having to play around with that and find out what works best for you. So I have the battery. So here's the top of the brad. Then we have our magnet and then we have our battery. Next up, I use my fingernail once again to kind of pull off uh, some of the protective coating around the wire. Just be careful when you do that. Otherwise you may end up pulling the wire straight out of the motor or even worse, breaking off your, uh, breaking off the wire completely. So just be careful when you do that. Now you're gonna take this uh, brad and you're going to wrap the wire around this brad and lock it into place. All right, now that I've gotten it attached to the brad, I'm gonna go ahead and put the brad on either side of this cotton swab and just close it to make sure it's nice and tight and held in there. Uh, we want this to stay on our creation, so we're gonna go ahead and really make sure that's on there fairly tight. All right, so it looks something like that. And basically this is gonna be your on off switch. So right now we have an open circuit, so nothing is happening but when I touch it to the battery, it starts working. And then if I flip it over, okay, I had to make some slight alterations because it was not working well. So I did go away for a moment and kind of figure out what to do. As you can see, I've basically um, kind of uh, pushed the end of the motor into the modeling material and built it up around the sides because my motor kept trying to slip out the back of my brad and so I wanted to make sure that I didn't have a way to go backwards out so I kind of buried it into some of that modeling material and I think I've got it set up uh, nicely so I'm going to get it reconnected here and we'll try it out. All right, I've got it hooked all back up again, and right now we have an open circuit, which means the electricity is not flowing through the circuit, but when I connect my brad up to the battery, it should automatically, since it has a magnet on it, it will connect and should stay there, and then I can flip it over. And it doesn't work so well here on my surface because it is a rubbery surface, but let's go ahead and try uh, out some of that watercolor and see what it does. Okay, I grabbed some water and so all I'm gonna do is you don't wanna dunk your robot into the water cause that could end up short circuiting everything. So just tip the water over so that way you can get all of your cotton swabs wet just like that. And now I'm gonna pick some colors. So I'm gonna grab some like blue, I think. All right, here we go. Here's the first test. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and then put it down on my paper. <laughs> Looks like it's kind of gotten stuck there. Let me see if I can push it around a little bit. All right, let me tinker with it a little bit. As you can see, my little robot didn't quite do as good as I was hoping for. I got him almost to do a full rotation, pretty close there. Uh, but it looks like I need to tinker with him a little bit more and see if I can figure out what's going on. One of the problems is my battery was equal or sometimes higher than these cotton swabs. And so I had to kind of adjust the cotton swabs to make sure that they kept the battery higher. I also had a problem with the vibrating part of my 
my motor hitting some of this model material and so I kind of had to play around with that. You'll have to tinker and engineer and experiment with yours to see if you can get it the way that you want it to uh, and to work and also remember that there's uh, weight issues as well. So like maybe I used too much of that modeling material and it's too heavy for the motor to vibrate and make it move around. So maybe I should have used less modeling material as well. Who knows? There's a lot of different things that could affect how your robot works. So experiment, hypothesize, and see what happens. We interact with robots all the time and we don't even think about it. Do you have a robot vacuum at home? Did you know some of the libraries have a robot that helps return and sort the books? Some robots are very complex and have many tasks that they can complete. Other robots are simple and only complete one or two tasks. The robot we made today is a very simple robot. It uses a simple circuit and only has one task, to move around the page spreading paint across the watercolor paper. Let's take a look at the circuit. In this circuit we have a battery, the motor, and a brad that's acting as a switch. When the brad is not touching the battery, the circuit is open and the electricity cannot flow through the system. When you move the brad so that it's touching the battery, it closes the circuit and allows the electricity to flow through the wires in a loop. Just like at home, when the light switch is in the off position, your lights are off because the circuit is open and it doesn't allow the electricity to flow. Flip on the light switch and it allows the electricity to flow through the circuit and turn the lights on. So like I said in the video, there are so many different ways to tinker and engineer your robot to perfect the perfect creation that it makes on that watercolor paper. So give it a try and tinker with it and see if you can get better results than I did. Thanks for joining me today and don't forget to come back next month for the next Maker 101 project. Bye!